drops. Well, maybe not. Maybe a bit. Maybe I'll actually learn a good name, Sam. I'm going live. I'm going live, mate. 30 seconds. 32 seconds. I'm going to watch my name. That's 65. I do. I do. It's easy. I could have got this. Otherwise, how long are you going to eat? <laughs> Seems <laughs> like the people are not happy. Uh, what after June, isn't it? Right? Yeah. Inside, get into the floorboards, which is a nice look. Oh, what is it? I don't know, it's just having a camera. Just a bit of a camera. Maybe. It's got lights on. Can you just type? Um, can you hear me? Can somebody respond? Can you hear me? This is my teaching volume anymore, and I'm going to pass out. So hopefully. Yep, sweet. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the other tree goes? Is that you, Steph? <laughs> of course you can hear me, you muppet. You're on the other side of the door. <laughs> ah, it's all... Okay. I don't think I don't. Mm.
If my microphone is there, can you still hear me? Even if I'm back in downward dog, can you still hear me now? Did you hear me there or no? Oh, loads of people said yes. Sweet. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to start. Um, otherwise, we will run out of time and you just you don't want to run out of time with Rocket. So, for those of you that are new to Rocket, welcome. I'm super excited to have you here. Um, Rocket is found in Ashtanga. Um, it has all the same standard postures um, and sort of high energy factor that Ashtanga has. Um, but don't worry too much about doing the shapes, I just want you to have a good time. Remember, nobody can see you, so it's important uh, that you don't hurt yourself. You can hurt yourself doing yoga. Um, I'm going to offer as many variations as I can, but obviously um, I can only do so much before it's time to move on to the next pose. So make sure you can breathe, make sure you're smiling. Um, and yeah, have a good time. If you are pregnant or injured, um, work within your limits. I did practice rocket to the end of my pregnancy, but I also practiced it pretty hard before my pregnancy, so I knew what I was doing and what I could do. Um, if you have an injury or you're growing a human, these are not the times to push your limits, okay? I do encourage people to go towards their limits, never encourage people to smash through them. Um, that is particularly important if you're pregnant, so be really careful um, if you are in things like wide legs or lunges or splits, that you don't go right to your edge due to hypermobility um, that comes with pregnancy, just be mindful. Um, and same, if you've got injuries, particularly in knees and hips, maybe keep your knees bent, maybe don't push right to the edge. Remember, I, I'm not there to give you a personal assist. I'm more than happy to help you out um, after class. You can send me a message on my Instagram or whatever, and I can definitely help you out with some assist for next class. Um, but today, just go steady. We're going to work through the bottle uh, rocket sequence, which is 45 50 minutes of movement and some chill out and a nice little shavasana at the end. We're going to start with our sun salutations. We'll take the first one nice and slow and then build up as we work through. Then we'll move to our standing postures. Um, and then we'll work our way down to the ground, take some flight, and then chill out. So, I hope you're all ready. Um, let's get cracking. I'm just checking. Can you still hear me? Let me just have a quick look. Great. Amazing. All right. So, coming up to the top of your mat or space, wherever it is that you're yoging, make sure there are no small children or pets under your feet. <laughs> Place your feet nice and firm into the mat. You can have them together or under your knees, wherever your knees happen to be. Let's spread the toes, draw length and strength up the legs, up the spine, down the arms. Maybe close your eyes for a moment while you connect to your breath. If you're going to practice Ujjayi breathing, go for it. In and out through the nose, the ocean breath. Otherwise, just make sure you can breathe. Let's use the next inhale to take the arms up, opening the eyes and lifting them too. Catch your wrist, and as you exhale, bend up through one side. Inhale back to the middle, and exhale the other way. Inhale back to centre, reach up, look up, start to draw the shoulder blades down. And as you exhale, hinge from the hips, soft knees, hands to the floor. Inhale, look forwards, leave your eyes there. Hands come down, take your feet back. Let's all bring the knees down for the first one. Squeeze the elbows in. Exhale, shoulders forwards. Inhale, reach out through the heart, untuck the toes. And find your way back and up into downward dog. And for this first one, just make sure your hands are nice and firm. Arms are long and strong, sides are long and strong. And maybe bend into your knees, both together, one at a time. Wipe your tail. Two more breaths. Look forward. 
Step your feet towards your hands and inhale, nice long spine. Exhale, fold over your legs. Inhale, tall, hands and hands up. Exhale, reset. We'll do two more of those. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, hinge and fold. Inhale, look forward, leave the eyes there. You can hop the feet back, but make sure you land with soft elbows. As you inhale, open up to upward dog. And as you exhale, press those hips back, down the dog. All right, so finding that nice, strong position for the shoulders. Those of you with more space, make sure you haven't rolled down into your shoulder blades. Those of you with less, bend your knees so you can get your head back in between your arms. And whether your legs are straight or bent, push your heels towards the mat. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Last breath. Exhale, prepare to come forwards with a hop or a step. Inhale, nice and long. Exhale, fold. Inhale, up. Exhale, reset. Last one. Inhale, tall. Exhale, fold. Inhale, look forwards and back through your chaturanga. Inhale, open up. And exhale, downward duck. If it feels good here to reach one leg out, go for it. Keep your hips balanced to start with. And then go ahead and try and stack them. Maybe bend that top knee, flex or point the foot. Try and keep the weight even in your hands. Return to the middle. Other side. Inhale, lift that leg up. And explore. Back to downward dog for an in and out. Exhale, prepares you, come forward. Inhale, nice and long. Exhale, fold over. Inhale. Exhale, reset. Moving on to our bees as we inhale, chair pose, hips down, hands up. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, look forward, eyes stay there as the feet go back through your vinyasa, nice and steady, all the way to downward dog. Next exhale, squeeze the right knee into the chest, place the right foot forwards. Use your inhale to lift the hands high, come back down through your vinyasa, maybe a double chaturanga. Left side when you're ready. Place your left foot firmly forwards. Use your inhale to lift up. Come back down through your vinyasa. Downward dog. Okay, let's find a twist here. So bringing that right hand across the mat, maybe pausing in the middle, looking out the left side, or maybe reaching the left ankle. Use your legs to pull you back. Other side. Back to downward dog. And exhale, prepare as you come forwards. Inhale, nice and long. Exhale, fold, ready for chair. As you inhale, hips down, hands up. Exhale, tall. Two more of those, inhaling to chair. Exhaling to fold. Back through your vinyasa, nice and steady. Chaturanga, opening to up dog, and down dog. Right foot forwards for warrior one or crescent lunge. Use your inhale to rise up, and your exhale to come back down. Maybe you fancy a transition through EPK, finding your way through your vinyasa. Left side, left foot forwards. Inhale, reach up tall, come back down, through whatever you explored on the other side, down dog, good. From here we're going to drop down into turbo dog, so try not to let the elbows touch the mat, squeeze them in so they stay at shoulder width, let your arms bend, you can bend your knees 
or you can keep your legs long, keep those hips back, keep breathing. Extending the arms back for down and up, and come forwards. Inhale, nice and long. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair. Exhale, so last one, off you go. Inhale to chair. Exhale to fold. Back through your vinyasa, keeping your eyes forwards. Down with dog. Right side first, step up. Inhale, lift the body up, hands up. Come back down, find your way through. Whatever works. Left side. Step forwards. Reach up as you inhale. Come back down. Find your way to downward dog. I'm just going to take five breaths here. Nice, big, full breaths. Make your breath louder than your thoughts. Next exhale prepares you to come forward. And then come. Inhale, nice and long. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair. Exhale, tall. And just taking a moment at the top of your mat, hands at your heart, maybe closing your eyes. And just give your practice a purpose this evening. Where is the energy going? Are you keeping it for you or sending it out into the world? There is no wrong answer. All right, we're going to head back into chair. So just like before with mountain pose, make sure your knees stay over your feet or your feet are under your knees. So you can sit your feet together, knees can touch, or work at hip width and place your imaginary block between your knees. Thighs on, pelvic floors lifting, bellies lifting, hands come together at your heart and get those um, elbows nice and energised. And then try and slip down the wall behind you. So try not to hinge forwards, just try and drop as deep as you can, keeping your knees in line with your feet and your hips and your shoulders stacked. Breathe here. Good. Next inhale, let's take the arms up. Good. As we exhale, we're going to swoop the arms back and bring the chest onto or between the thighs, coming to find skier. So try and keep your bum at knee height, reach out through those fingers and maybe push up onto your tiptoes, lifting the heels. Good. All right, bring your hands down and we'll come check in with crow pose. Options are to drop into squat if you prefer and just get nice and low, get your knees and your arms close. Otherwise, you can try and stick your knees onto your arms, look forwards and squeeze those feet up. Try not to look at your hands, trust that they're there. Squeeze the toes towards the bottom. Last breath and then back through your vinyasa all the way. To downward dog. All right, we're going to set the right foot forward for warrior one. So bring your right foot up, make sure your right knee goes with your foot, but then just turn your left foot to whatever angle you need for your left hip to look forward. Nice and strong in the legs. Pick everything up from the inside, just bring the hands together, you can interlace or just press the palms and reach up. Good. Keep going up first. Don't worry about back for now. Just stretch those sides up and stay deep in your legs. Can you take your eyes to your thumbs? If you've got room and space to explore your back bends, go up and over your waistband rather than into it. Breathe. Next inhale reaches you up, open the hands, and as you exhale, twist out, and perhaps turn your back foot a bit for warrior two, make sure your front knee is still forwards and your back heel is the furthest point. Reach to your fingertips. Good. Let's bring the 
arms down behind and interlace. As you inhale, roll the heart up. And as you exhale, roll the crown of your head towards your big toe. Roll your front knee out the way so you can bring your shoulder down. Push into the back foot. Good. You can extend the arms and lift them. Just be careful not to lock your elbows out. Breathe here. All right, legs strong, belly strong, up you come. Time for triangles, so perhaps bring that back foot around and in a bit so you're a bit shorter. Reach those arms out. You can exhale to pull the hips back, suck legs into that front leg as you reach forwards and tip down. You don't have to have a straight leg, but if you do, make sure it's because your foot is firmly in the mat and your hips are sucking underneath you rather than you've straightened out your knee. You can fold that top arm behind if that feels good. You can bring the fingertips to the floor or take them away. Your hand isn't holding you up. Good, plug into the feet. Pull yourself up, revolve triangle. So again, maybe take your back foot out and around a bit. Bring yourself level, pull length into that front leg and twist as you bring your left hand down to the floor, inside or outside of the right foot or on top, and reach that right arm up. Again, legs don't need to be straight, they just need to be strong. But try and make them as long as you can. And maybe folding that top arm away again. Maybe taking the bottom hand away and testing your balance. Stick your thighs together. That's what keeps you here. Good, all the way up. Inhaling, come back out to warrior two, exhaling. So maybe go a bit wider, maybe turn that back foot. Good. Bring the front arm across the belly, back arm to your ear, reach out through those fingertips, push into the pinky edge, bend into the front knee, make sure it goes forwards, not inwards, and then try and bring your ribs onto your thigh. Stretch out as long as you can. You can bring the bottom arm out, you could try and find a bind here. Bring your hand to the floor. Focus on that length and strength in the sides. Good, next inhale picks you up. Let's spin on the back toes. And as you exhale, keep spinning and bring your left elbow outside your right knee. If you're pregnant, definitely don't do this one. If you're really pregnant, you won't be able to. Good. Keep pressing out through that back heel, or maybe drop the back knee. Can you take your eyes to the ceiling? Good. Spin yourself back down. So chance for a little play now with that transition that was in our sun salutations. You're going to try and stick your right knee to the top of your right arm. So you could do that in plank, just trying to squeeze that right foot up and push the floor away with the hands as you pull the body up. You could drop into chaturanga. You could extend that right leg out. You could lift the back leg. Maybe you can catch some balance. You can do all of that with bent legs. Breathe. And then back through your vinyasa to downward dog. Good. All right, dolphin number one. So onto the knees, onto the elbows. Just give your arms a quick hug. Make sure your fingers wrap around the outsides of your arms. Either interlace your hands or place them flat. Plug into the mat, pull the body up and away as you tuck the toes and start to walk the hips up over the shoulders. Try not to come forwards. You don't have to have straight legs, but you can try and extend them out if that feels okay. Breathe here. Last one. And then down into child's pose. So knees wide, big toes touch, push those hips back and stretch your spine out. Grab a drink if you need. Breathe deep. All right, with or without vinyasa, let's return to downward dog. If you do your vinyasa, don't rush it. Take your time. Find your way. Good. 
And then left foot forwards for warrior one. So left foot down, right foot down. Make sure both hips look forwards, both shoulders look forwards. Grounding the legs, hands come together and reach them up. Take your eyes past your thumbs. Keep strong and deep in the legs as you lift and lengthen through the sides, through the arms. And if there's a bend, bend from the ribs, not the hips. Good, next inhale takes you up. And as you exhale, twist out, warrior two. So just make any adjustments that you need. You don't have to adjust anything. Just try and let those hips open up to the side. Get nice and deep in that front knee. Find the ends of your fingers and bring them down behind you. Inhale, lift up your heart. Exhale, fold forwards. So try and move that left knee out the way. Try and bring your left shoulder inside as you bring the crown of your head to your big toe. Push into the back foot and lift those arms long and strong over the top. Don't lock out your elbows. All right, push into the back foot to bring you up and perhaps shorten your stance slightly for triangle. Get ready to pull those hips back as you exhale, reach forwards, lay your ribs along your front thigh. Reach up tall through that top arm. Good. And then maybe fold it away behind you. Maybe reach down to the floor or perhaps bring your bottom hand away as well. With strong legs, strong sides holding you up here. All right, all the way up. And adjust slightly maybe for revolve triangle, so right foot steps out a bit perhaps. Exhale, pull that length and twist and bring your right hand down to the floor, to your foot, wherever you need. Stick those sides together and reach up tall. Or fold away and take away the bottom hand. Play with all the same ideas as you did on the other side, just be curious, don't demand anything. And then we come back to warrior two, inhale, exhaling out and reset. Good. So just check your feet and then the front arm comes across, back arm reaches up and over. Try and stick your arm in your ear and keep them there. Inhale nice and long. Exhale, bring your ribs to your side, bend into your knee. Twist your side body up. Try and see the ceiling above your mat. Reach out, maybe bring the bottom arm out. Maybe you bring the bottom hand down, or maybe you bind. Find what you need. Good, inhaling back up. Spin on those back toes, and as you exhale, twist across, and come into your tightest tuck that works for you. If you didn't have a reason to not go super tight, you can twist through your shoulders and keep your belly away. Good, spinning back down and can play with the same idea on this side. So start with that plank, trying to squeeze that left foot off the floor, turn it into a chaturanga, maybe an extension, maybe you can take off, maybe you prefer to bend your legs, keep them shorter, and then back through your vinyasa to downward dog. All right, dolphin number two, if you're dropping in from the top, both elbows together. Otherwise, down onto the knees. Check your arms at the right distance. Find your hands where they need to be. And then walk those hips up high. Maybe you go for a leg lift. Try not to spin. Try and keep those hips level. Maybe you go for hops. Keep breathing. Last one. And rest. Child's pose, or whatever feels restful for you. All right, 
from your child's pose, let's bring ourselves up into a high plank. So bring your hands nice and strong into the mat about shoulder width, tuck your toes and lengthen those legs. Bring your shoulders as far forward as feels good for you. Just behind the wrist, on top, beyond, on the tops of your toes, but really concentrate on pressing those shoulder blades apart, pulling the belly away from the mat. Breathe here. Here we're going to come into side plank. So sort your feet out, spin yourself onto your right hand, lift your left hand high, push your hips up, make a bend in your side body. Left foot could stack on top, you could lift, you could try and hold it. Just keep your bum facing out behind you, don't let it roll underneath. Breathe. And back through the middle, other side, left hand down, right hand reaches up, hips press high, and explore the legs on this side. No expectations, just see what happens. Four, back to plank, back to downward dog. And just walk your feet in a bit closer to your hands so you can bend your knees. Then you're going to push up onto fingertips, both hands together, if you can. And then start to walk your hands back towards your feet until you feel like you could rock yourself back to the back of your mat, folding over your legs. Okay, so bend your knees so your body comes close to your thighs. Take hold of your big toes. Just be careful your knees don't knock here. As you inhale, nice long arms look forwards. And as you exhale, pull the elbows out, roll the crown down, lift the thighs away from the kneecaps, draw the belly in, roll those sit bones up. Be careful not to rock into your heels here. Try and shift the weight forward, squash your fingers a bit. All right, let's keep everything on, but we'll switch the grip. Try and bring the palms of your hands under the soles of your feet. You can practice with as wide legs as you need. Just try and keep your toes facing forwards. Inhale, nice and long in the arms. Exhale, fold yourself close to your legs. You want to feel the stretch in your hips, in your bum, not just your hamstrings, not just your upper back. Don't rush to get your legs straight. From here, you can really start to shift your weight forwards maybe. Maybe the heels get light. Maybe you push the backs of the hands into the mat. You can pull yourself right up onto tiptoes. Breathe. And release your heels, release your hands, hold your elbows, and try and stick your toes to your forearms. Good, we're gonna come check in with Crow again. Try and keep your bum as high as you can. So bring those hands down. Shoulder width for a touch wider maybe, get them strong in the mat, stuck in the mud. Squeeze the elbows in, place the knees to the outsides of the arms. Keep your bum up, squeeze your feet up. Breathe. Try not to kick off or take off, just try and float up. The less oomph you go up with, the less you have to control. Last breath, as you drop down onto your tiptoes, bring your hips to knee height, and reach those fingers forwards. Come into chair, back in those stilettos. Good. All right, leave your hips low. Let's bring those shoulders up. Good. You can bring your arms in front if you prefer. And then press all the way up tall and close your eyes. Maybe you need a few steps to manage your wobbles. Keep breathing, be brave. Way scarier stuff going on in the world right now than standing on your tiptoes with your eyes closed. You can do it. Last breath. And open up. With a hop or a step, we're going to go wide. Nice and long in your space. Double shoulders or a touch more. Don't go too far wide though. Just a bit wider than the double shoulders maybe. Turn your toes in a bit. Point both edges of your feet. Nice long thighs, strong thighs, hands on your hips. Inhale, tall as you squeeze the elbows together. And as you exhale, reach out through your chin, feel your toes catch you. Make sure they're ready. 
reach forwards, reach forwards, and then start to pull those hips up as you pull the belly in, thighs pulling it up, press into your feet, squeeze the elbows towards each other. Good. Release your hands down under your face. Leave one there, flat your fingertips, whatever you need. As you inhale, lift the other one tall. Twist through the shoulders. Try and keep your legs balanced, doing the same thing. So if you bend one, bend the other. Otherwise, both nice and long. You can fold that top arm behind you, tucking into your side maybe. You can reach the bottom arm across to the opposite ankle. Pull right over to your leg, or pull back into the middle, wherever you are. Be there on purpose. Good, untangle, reset, and explore the other side. Nice and steady, don't rush to where you just were. Work through the places that you visited on the other side. So find your twist, balance your legs. Maybe wrap the top arm. Maybe reach across. Maybe pull across. Maybe pull back to the middle. And return back to centre. Taking your hands either to your ankles or your big toes. And feel free to bend your knees here. As you inhale, you want nice long arms, long spine. And as you exhale, try and bring your belly and your ribs in between your sides. Bending your knees can really help you feel what that might be like. And then see if you can extend those hips a bit higher. Push those feet a bit stronger into the mat. Squeeze those thighs a bit tighter. And suck that belly up. Breathe. Good. Bring your hands back down underneath your face. Turn your heels in, toes out, and just bend all the way over to one side. Keep your feet flat to start with. And then we'll go the other way. You could go no hands if you like. You could start to pull the toes up to the ceiling. Just make sure your thighs are strong before you stretch your hamstrings out. Other side. One more each way. Good. Back to the middle. Bring those hands down. Arms are strong, core is strong. As you start to walk your feet out as wide as they'll go, coming to find your middle splits today. Keep the soles of your feet stuck to the floor until your bum's down. Keep those shoulders strong. Keep that belly strong. Arms can be straight. Legs can be bent. It's going to be a sumo squat. You can come down onto your elbows. Make sure you're breathing and everything's on. Don't waste any muscles, but relax your face. Good. Last breath here. And you bring yourself up away from the mat a little. Walk those feet a bit closer. And spin over one leg and drop the other knee down towards the floor behind you. Maybe keep your toes tucked. Maybe untuck them. Press that back hip forward. Balance your hips out first. You could stay there. You could bring your hands away from the mat. You could start to walk that front foot forwards. Whatever works for you. If you've got your hands down, just make sure you're not heavy. Squeeze everything up away from the floor. Remember, without strength, stretches aren't safe. Everything works in pairs. Something has to get shorter so something else can get longer. Keep breathing. Maybe you find a twist across that front leg to help that back hip drive forwards. Carefully, bring yourself back through the middle, walk the feet a bit closer. Remember, start where you started. Don't rush that second side. Bring your knee down, balance your hips. Drive that back hip forwards, that back side towards the floor. And then work stage by stage, just exploring. Don't expect to find the same place. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. Nice and steady. Good. 
bringing yourself down onto your bottoms and taking your legs out wide. So we're coming into pancake pose here. I'm going to sit at a funny angle so you can see my back. So what we want to be careful is that we don't keep our legs straight and get stuck up in our upper back. We want to hinge from our hips. So maybe bending your knees helps. You want to be able to reach forwards and hold your feet. You can hold your big toes or the edges. You can always straighten your legs after that. Inhale, nice and tall and long. And exhale, suck your thighs in, suck your belly in, and reach your chin out. If you feel comfortable to straighten the legs out more, go for it. If you've got loads of room here, don't just collapse into it. Make sure something's working. Ideally, everything. Breathe. Good. Roll yourself back. Okay. If you've got blocks at home and you're used to this drill, you're welcome to grab them. I'm going to go without because not everybody does. Let's close the gap between the feet slightly and bring the hands either side of one thigh. Make sure your fingers face your shoulders. This is a little rocket trademark, our Muller van der checkups. Pull your toes in towards you. Maybe you bend your leg a little bit. You want to pick yourself up from the inside. Bring your seat away from the floor. Scoop those hips back and then press into the hands and try and get the bum to take off. Use your feet or float your feet. Breathe. And release. If you get cramp, like me, you can put your elbow in, it's quite useful. With practice, that does go away, I promise. Other side, hands nice and forward facing, legs where they need to be, pick everything up, scoop those hips back and press and fly. And release. Yeah, keys. That's good today. All right, let's flex the left foot, close the left knee, and bring the sole of the left foot in towards the right thigh. Check your knees okay. Spin your shoulders either side of that right leg and try and pull your right toes towards your nose. You can always bend your knee. Your leg doesn't need to be straight. Reach forwards. Try and take your face to your foot rather than your head to your knee. You can hold your foot, just keep space around the neck and try and balance those shoulders out. If you can't hold your foot, you can bring the left arm across to the outside of the right leg. Breathe. This is for your back body, so don't let yourself twist yet. We'll come and twist now. So we're going to bring the right hand inside or right arm inside the right leg. Left hand to left knee as you twist the body open. Maybe you stay there, maybe you reach the left arm up, maybe you reach over and you can find your toes, but don't spin into the floor. Maybe you bring the right hand across to the left knee. You can also just interlace the hands behind the head and use that right elbow with a wedge. That's my favorite. Keep those right toes standing tall. All right, bringing yourself back up. Extend your left leg and bring your right leg in. So flex your foot, close your knee, and bring that right foot in as close as feels comfortable. Check everything's all right. Balance those shoulders. Pull those left toes towards your face. Reach forwards. Try and keep your shoulders level. You might notice quite a big difference between the sides. That's okay. Just try and find the same intensity and feeling rather than just the same shape. Add the arms that work for you on this side. All right, left arm comes inside the left leg and explore your twist here. So trying to get those right ribs to look at the sky. Adding any extra arm bits that feel good, that work. Left toes standing tall. All right, bringing yourself back up onto your sit bones, coming long ways on your mats, somewhere near the middle, maybe a little bit behind. Let's come into a boat pose. So find your sit bones, squeeze your knees towards your shoulders, point or flex the feet or find those Barbie feet in the middle. As you pull up away, from the floor, try not to sink down, keep yourself tall. Tuck your chin so your head pulls you forwards rather than backwards. And 
breathe as you spread all that strength out to the edges of your belly. You can go and explore lifting the legs. Just don't get your boat any wider. Keep that spine nice and long. Last breath here. As you cross the ankles, try and roll over and back through your vinyasa all the way to down the dog. Okay, walking your hands back, two hands. Bending into your knees, getting your sides and your belly connected. We're going to try and jump through the hands. So remember, for that to happen, you need to get your hips high. You want to do a mini handstand. I am not about to show you that, but find that feeling. Inhale, lots of energy. Exhale, belly on, hips up. And then as lightly as you can, find your way onto your bum. So we're going to do our forward folds now. So again, maybe starting with your knees bent. Flex your toes towards you. Shorten those thighs, pull the belly in. As you inhale, reach up. And as you exhale, lay your belly onto your thighs. Find the feet. Keep the spine long. You can hold your big toes or the outside edges. If you can extend the legs away from you and keep that contact belly and thigh, go for it. Try not to lose it and get a big round back. Work with what you've got. Keep breathing. You could hold opposite feet, so cross your wrists. You could bring your hands behind your feet and hold your wrists if that's available. You can just let the elbows drop to the mat and balance the shoulders out. Last breath here. Good. Next inhale, take the hands up. And as you exhale, bring them down behind you, fingers facing your hips. Okay, we're going to turn into our upward plank here. Options are you can do tabletop, so knees can bend, feet come in, and you can push up there. Or if you want to, you can bring those legs long, but try and stick your big toes together, knees together, and push the hips up, toes touch the floor. You can let your head hang for a breath or two, but try and pull that chin down as well to get the neck nice and strong. Give yourself some extra chins. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Good. As you lower the hips, try and suck them back through your hands. And maybe you can take a little bit of flight. Whew, more cramp. Excellent. All right. Let's come back to our boat. Let's go for a bigger boat this time. So maybe start with your feet a bit further away in whatever shape you like. Pull yourself nice and tall. Get that back straight. And then take off. Maybe here you find it's more available to extend the legs. Maybe you can extend the arms as well, but stay tall and breathe. Good, last one. As you cross the ankles, roll over through your vinyasa. All the way to downward. All right, one last jump through. So just prepare, bring the hands back a bit. Get those knees close to the chest, ready. And when you're ready, up, forwards, and through. And then shuffle along your space and come down onto your back. I'm gonna spin this in my head and find the microphone. So just make sure that your feet are about hip width. And it's better for them to be a bit wider than for them to be hip width and your knees to fall out, okay? So pay attention to where your knees go when you push your hips up. Turn your big toes in a bit, maybe. Feet are strong in the mat, shoulders are strong in the mat. Perhaps you can tickle your heels with your fingers. Bum squeezes on, inside bottom picks up, and inhale, press those hips to the ceiling. And you're trying to break that line from knees to shoulders. You're trying to get those hips to be the highest point. Bum squeezes strong, feet and legs are strong into the mat. Shoulders are strong. You could bring your hands under your back and rest on your elbows. You could interlace your hands and roll onto the outsides of your shoulders, upper arms. You can hold your ankles here if you like. Keep breathing and don't let go of your bum. That's keeping your back safe. Good. Last one. Keep the bottom on until it's all the way down to the mat as you lower down. We're going to do two more sets of five breaths. You can stay up for 10 breaths if you prefer. 
and play with any options you like. You could press yourself up to bridge and explore one leg at a time. Just make sure your hips stay balanced. You can come right up to full wheel if you like. Just make sure you use your legs and you try and press your heart through your arms, okay? Don't let it all be in, um, in the lower back. Whatever you're up to, you've got six, seven more breaths. So play. And breathe wherever you've got to. Last one. And slowly bring yourself down, bottom stays on until you're on the mat. Good, bring your knees in for a hug. Have a little roll. Options here. You could come into waterfall, just sending the soles of the feet to the ceiling. If you've got a cushion nearby, you can pop it under your hips. Or if you want to go up into shoulder stand, just get your hands ready as you rock the hips up. And make sure you try and get the shoulders, um, or the hips, sorry, on top of the shoulders. So squeeze your elbows into your shoulder width, and then extend out through the legs to pull your spine nice and long. Good. Don't look anywhere but your toes. If you want to, you could drop your feet carefully behind you. Maybe knees to forehead first, if that's new. Please don't try and look at the screen while you're doing this. Pause it, or you can't pause it, but maybe sit up and look, and then come and explore in a second. So if you're coming into plow, keep those hips high, keep that back straight, and maybe rest on the tops of the feet, or tuck the toes, and stretch out the hamstrings a bit more. Once the feet are down, you could bring your hands off your back and maybe interlace them, extend the arms away. Final option from here is deaf man's pose, so letting those knees drop either side of the ears. I'm not going to go right in because you won't be able to hear me. And then wherever you've got to, coming out nice and carefully, so bringing the hands Back to the back for support as the legs go up. And then nice and steady, maybe bending the legs so they're not so heavy, rolling down onto your back. Good. And you can either let the knees rest in on each other or feet together, knees out to the sides. Just take a moment there. Just spinning again, you guys stay where you are. And then go ahead and bring the knees in over the tummy and just start to rock gently forwards and backwards, rolling the whole length of the spine. Once you start to get right up onto your bum, catch yourself in a boat. Good. Pull up nice and tall and cross the ankles, roll yourself over all the way back. Last vinyasa. And down the dog. All right, reaching that right leg out behind you, nice and long. And then bringing the right knee to the back of the right wrist. If you've got a cushion or a blanket, feel free to grab it to help prop up your hips. We're coming into pigeon. So flex that right foot. And just gently encourage the right foot forwards to wherever it gets to. If it won't go anywhere, don't yank it. Make sure your knee's happy. Try and keep that right hip level with the left. So if you need something under it, go ahead. You could tuck the left toes and just stretch that left leg. But keep yourself tall here. Try not to dump into the lower back. And you could walk those hands forwards, maybe rest on the elbows or forehead on the hands.
A nice twist option here. Walk your right hand out in front of you nice and long and slip your left arm underneath it. So you come down onto your left shoulder, left cheek. You could leave your right arm long or you can wrap it around behind you and maybe you can hold your right toes. Breathe. Good, untangle your twist and carefully lifting the spine long out of the hips as you come up. Drop onto your right bottom and bring your left leg round in front. So you can either stand your uh, left foot into your shin. Um, again, if you've got a bump, then you won't be able to twist very tight here, but you can still get the benefit in your upper back, excuse me. If you've got enough space and you can keep your bottom level, you can take your left foot outside your right knee. Just make sure you don't do a massive wheelie while you're there. Hold on to the left knee with the right hand. Inhale nice and tall as you exhale. Twist through the shoulders first. And maybe that's it. Or maybe you can pull the belly in and twist yourself a bit further. Yeah, those left fingertips are light. Or maybe you don't need them and you wrap them around. Maybe you can bind here. Find what you need. Okay, legs stay the same. Let's spin the shoulders the other way. And you can stay tall or you could walk yourself forward if that feels better. Good, and then bring yourself back to the middle. So we're going to explore cow face. You want to try and bring your knees to stack. This is pretty intense in the hips, so pay attention. If your knees are hurting, absolutely stop. If you're feeling interesting stuff, that's kind of what it's doing. So you should feel intensity in the outside of the hips, the insides of the thighs. Good. You can stay there. You could fold forwards, or you could find eagle arms. So you have right elbow on top of left, and then maybe tuck your elbows over your knee. If this is too much for your knees, maybe try coming into double pigeon, so having your shins on top of each other, keep your feet flexed, or even just like a square cross legs. Don't hurt yourself, it's not worth it. You've got a long time of quarantine, that's a lot of yoga, so stay well. All right, bring yourself back up. If you want another boat and another vinyasa transition, Feel free to take it now, otherwise finding your way back to Downward Dog and walk it out. Shake the tail, bend to the knees, do whatever feels good. And then we'll lift that left leg up and then left knee to left wrist. Flex the left foot and draw it towards the right hand. Stretch that right leg out nice and long. And just don't dump down here. Try and stay strong and lifted through the spine. Prop your bottom up if you need. Again, the two sides might be different. And when you're ready, walk those hands out maybe. Come and explore where you got to on the other side. Don't go looking for a particular shape. Just try them all. See where you get to. Maybe you walk that left hand out in front and reach the right arm underneath. And come and play with your twist on this side. Maybe your left arm wraps around. Maybe you can find your left foot. And tagging. And bring yourself back up. Nice and steady. Onto your left bum, spinning that right foot round to wherever it needs to be for your twist on this side. So into the shin or outside the knee, nice and level here. And then twist across that bent leg, shoulders first, and then using your belly as much as you can. Light on those back fingers, or maybe wrapping around, maybe binding.
Legs the same, shoulders the other way. And then coming into cow face or cross leg or whatever you explored on the other side. Whatever you had to do on the other side, or whatever you were able to do on the other side, check in with that on this side, okay? Don't, in, uh, don't uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Reinforce or make any worse any imbalance that you've already got. If you've got one side way more open than the other, just let that be for now and work on the other side. So if you're going for eagle arms again, it'll be left elbow on top of right, tangle those arms up, and then try and put the elbows over the knee. Otherwise, find and explore all the other options. Maybe it was the cross legs, maybe it was the double pigeon. Good, bring yourself back up. And we've made it to Shavasana. So if you wanna grab a glass of water, do it. If you wanna grab an extra layer or two, do it. If you'd rather do some extra shakes and shavasa after class, that's totally fine. Um, I'm going to lead us through a relaxation now. So get comfy with as many extra bits as you need. You can pull the cat back over now. And then you just want to get comfortable. You don't have to lie down. You could sit. You could lie on your front or your side. That starfish in a tried and tested shavasana shape it tends to be quite a nice way to just let the body reset. So coming to find yourself in that comfortable position, make sure that your body feels supported by whatever's beneath it. And then come and watch your breath. Bringing you what you need. Taking away what you don't. And as your body and your breath settle, invite your mind to do the same. Not to stop or turn off, but letting yourself be an observer allowing thoughts and distractions to come and go without following as you let yourself rest. You did the best you could today and that is always enough. As the softness starts to spread through the toes, feet, ankles, Legs heavy as your knees, bottom, hips, relax. All the way up your spine, your whole back and your shoulders melting down. Your belly soft and your chest open. The length of your arms relaxing, releasing your elbows, wrists, hands, fingers, your neck and your throat free, letting go of your jaw, lips, teeth, tongue, and your whole face soft. Cheeks, eyes, forehead, the back of your head, your whole body, soft, heavy, and relaxed as you bring your attention in, either resting at the space between your eyebrows or in heart center.
and gently starting to bring your attention back to your breath. Feeling that cool inhale fill you up, new space, new energy, and that warm exhale, carry away anything that no longer serves you. As you feel each breath, bring a little more energy in. Feel it start to build, start to spread. Down the arms to the fingers, down the legs to the toes, finding a little wiggle. And a little bit more as you reconnect your mind and your body with your breath, shifting your attention, bringing back movement piece by piece, toes to nose, maybe stretching all the way out or tucking all the way in and then giving yourself a big hug. And say thank you to you for this time this evening. Time to explore, time to connect. Facing challenges with courage, kindness, playfulness and patience. And taking all of that with you along with the peace and calm that you've created into your evening, into the weekend. Keeping your eyes closed if you can, carefully coming up to a comfortable seat. There, maybe rolling the head side to side and back to the middle. Next, inhale, shoulders to ears. Exhale, drop. Two more. And bringing your hands to prayer at your heart. Just reminding yourself where the energy of your practice is going tonight, locking it in for you. Or sending it out into the world. If you'd like to join me in an on, you're very welcome. Inhale. especially to yourself, and turning your hands to your heart. Always do good things. Opening your eyes. Namaste. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm going to stick around for a few minutes on the chat, so any questions, let me know. Um, any feedback, definitely let me know. Um, I can iron out some creases for next time, hopefully. Uh, any things you want to work on, cool. On Sunday, there's a 90 minute practice, um, so we'll have a bit longer to explore a bit more. Um, so yeah, definitely, if there's anything you want to work on, give me a shout, we can try and work that into the class. Um, and yeah, thanks so much for joining me. Have a lovely evening. If you're sticking around for half the next, awesome. I'll see you in a moment. I'm just going to finish on this stream and then sign into the next one. So yeah, big love. Thanks very much.
So guys, if you're still there, um, I'm going to put my narwhals, if you used to come into my class and have unicorns and narwhal cards at the end, affirmation cards, I'm going to grab a narwhal for me and I'm going to put it up in my Instagram story so I can close the stream. Um, so if you don't already, then feel free to me follow or you can just head over there. Um, I probably won't do it till after seven because I'll get cracking in the next class. Um, but it's at Yoga with Lizzie Higgins. It's still in the chat stream. Um, but yeah, I'm sure you can find me. Um, same as my name on the schedule. Um, so I'm off now. Have a lovely evening or see you in half room mode. Uh, lots of love. Right, end that one. Mm -hmm. So I just say, if you sure you want to end screen, end. Yeah, for sure. Right.